What's good, y'all, and welcome to my review for this episode of My Hero Academia Season 7. What? Another banger episode once again, man. Jiro got fucked up. <laughs> you know, really bad this episode, man. I mean, goddamn, but I want to coach you out without the chairman. Does he secretly not like Jiro? And he, he wanted to make sure to give her, like, a somewhat, like, gruesome, you know, fate, like a super gruesome kind of attack. Because, goddamn, man, her ear got fucked up. I don't know, considering like her earphone jack thing came off with the um, with the, um, the, the 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 thing she was using, the soundboard thing she was using, the speaker she was using. Does that mean like her cork doesn't work in that ear? Does it re does the earphone jack regrow itself? You know, can she like is she like strip death in one ear? Because also it looks like her ear itself just got fucked and was covered in blood. So I don't know. I guess maybe we'll find out later on in the series if she's now deaf in one ear. She's fine. If she just lost her cork in that in that ear, man, you know, I guess we'll find out soon enough later on the series, hopefully, of what happened to Shiro. <laughs> Goddamn, bro, she just got fucked up. Like that was the probably the most, you know, memorable part of it was just what happened to Shiro. Man, because she was like, Goddamn, bro, you didn't even do it like that, G. But anyway, besides that, man, this is a phenomenal episode, man. Um, the stuff with X with with, with uh, fucking um, uh, uh, fucking um. Endeavor also, I don't know, I was slipping on his thing for a moment, uh, was amazing, man. His whole thing with All for One, man, definitely calling back to All for One and All by where he, where he had his, uh, no, I, where he said, no, he said, no, I am your father, but by telling him that, you know, Shigaraki is Nana's grandson. And kind of doing that again with Endeavor, not straight up telling them he took his son, but basically, you know, implying it, he didn't really need to say that, yeah, I took your son, that's why you couldn't find him, you know, which... <laughs> All for one, man. Goaded villain, man. Easily one of the best villains in anime, just period. Especially if you want to go into, like, the shonen genre, man. He's definitely way up there with your likes of Madara, Aizen, you know, fucking, um, Gorus Masukuna, I guess you could put it in. He is definitely Vegeta, I guess you could throw him in there. Frieza, Cell, Majin Buu, Goku Black. He's definitely up there in that shonen elite of villains, man. He is fucking awesome, man. You gotta love him. I love his dub voice, Dead Man. It's, he's fucking dumb. I'm still on the VA's name on the top uh, of my head right now, but he's fucking incredible in the world. But anyway, guys, enough of me rambling. Let's just get it right to the actual episode. So we start the episode off after all of the, all of the recap and everything. We see we can right back where we left up with 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 um, shoot, with Todoroki and Dobby in the ending of their fight. We're going to announce that they that Todoroki is indeed subdued. Dobby, it doesn't look like he is done yet. Looks like we still got more with Dobby as we see later on in the episode. We then get to see some of the other heroes are stationed in the same area as Todoroki. Um, and with one of these characters straight up looking like Momo, like, I'm like, like you guys will see this in my reaction, that's I'm like, who is this Momo knockoff? She literally looks like Momo's mom. Maybe it is Momo's mom. I don't know, but she, I cannot be the only one that thought she looked very much like Momo. I like the outfit you're running with this Chinese dress kind of kung fu thing kind of going on there, man, with some, like, uh, with, like, Ikaku's eye makeup, but, with, but instead of it being red, it was purple. I liked it. I don't know if that was meant to be a reference to Ikaku, but hey, it reminded me of Ikaku, so we're going with it. But yeah, and we, they also start, they actually also play a, they also do a nice little callback to a very, from an iconic stuff from, I want to say season two is when this, dun, 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 dun. that song, I want to say that song debuted in season two, but I couldn't, that might be from the first. It was nice to hear that song. Once again, the end. Of course, we also get some nice animation with Ida fighting off against a no move. That was pretty nice as well. From here, we can just check out some of the other characters, see what they were up to while all of this was going on. And I, with the episode of the Calm Extras, I do wonder if all of this was in the original manga, or if this was Bones extending the extending the manga like they have done in the past and showing just showing for the other students were doing during all this. I don't know if this was in the manga or not, but I kind of like this. But I like this little bit of the first half of the episode. Regardless, so after so after Bernie announced that 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 Shinaraki, that Dobby has been subdued, and of course everyone is celebrating and rejoicing that we have that they have done and they have capped on their first victory. We then head over to to Mina's team as protecting Gigantomachia from from you know the soul from the other villains that are there. 
going on. Then we see some members of Class B playing Bud Man, so hey, we enjoy the Dallas when we get some springtime in this episode. <laughs> there you go. And then if y'all been watching follow and been paying attention to, to, to Dallas' Twitter recently, man, yo, bro, what's going on? For a first the man was tweeting about how Yu-Gi-Oh! is like way more advanced, it's way more complicated than Magic the Gathering. I said this to my friends who are like into the that do and D play the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game and have dabbled in Magic a little bit. Uh, they were like, nah, bro, he's wrong. <laughs> you know? So then actually, I like tweeted to Dallas, and he was like, no, you guys, you know, your friends are wrong. <laughs> it's really funny that he ex that, uh, they actually replied to me. Uh, so you got that, and then recently he's been on this, he's been on this massive rant about how tap water is superior to like filtered water. <laughs> and then like Jill got involved, they're like, I take a two minute, I take a two hour lap, and my husband is just going off, <laughs> or my partner, excuse me, is <laughs> just going off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time, folks. And, and also, Dallas now is supposed to give out like his like retro gaming escapades about what games he's bought recently. So, hey, <laughs> follow Dallas Red, Red on Twitter, man. You'll have a good time on his Dallas feed. <laughs> You'll have a good time there, man. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So, so my man's in there. He's doing his thing. Uh, Minetta looks like he's taking a shit for good for a little bit for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what was up with that, but he looked like he looked like he was taking a shit. So the filter here walk. Do y'all know any sub more so filter here walk? I don't. So it's really nice to see that the sub boy also got a quick cameo in there as well, fighting off against Mina. Also, we like the animation here where like one of the other guys came after Mina and she like used her like acid as like either either as a propeller to get her away from this uh, character's hat, uh, hammer, or she used it as like a shield. Either way, man, I like the animation on that one. That looked really cool. But as he's going off about talking how this is a re that how this is a waste of resources and those who spread lights will be trampled down, he mentions just like that Yui teacher. And oh, and Mina overhears this man and we get a flash of drill force, Midnight's death from six. She kinda looks in over there at the man, she lands down there like she is ready to fuck shit up with these guys. That look on her face when that was Mina ready to throw down and fuck something, fuck that shit up. I got hype, man. I got hype for this. Cause I'm like, like, oh shit, Mina about to go off, bro. This is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to hear Caitlyn Glass do this, man. She's gonna go off. You know, I got excited for this part. But and then right after that, we see the guy, the the first one she was just fighting come back to try to attack from behind. But then our boy Kirishima goes in there and manages to, and manages to stop this person. Gotta protect the other protect. Gotta watch your girls back, man. They love to see that. How manly of kiss. <laughs> I am just, I'm just going off this with you, man. So, you know, he helps her out. Then it looks like they're about to throw down against these guys. And then the episode cuts to a different part. I was, I, I was a little annoyed by this, man, because I was kind of hoping this would get extended. We could actually get to see a team up between Kirishima and Mina. And just to figure out who that dude's quirk was. Who is the, and learn more about the leader of this group, man. Because it looked really fucking cool, man. I really like this design, but... Unfortunately, no, the anime cuts there too. Over to Ojiro's team and over to Ojiro's team. Also, I forgot to mention, um, uh, uh, Minato, you know, I gotta say, Minato, even though I like said it before, he looked like he was taking a shit. <laughs> he was doing something, he was doing something, man, he was doing some damage in there. You can see, if you guys were paying attention, you can see that Minato was going off a little bit. He was definitely, he was definitely pulling his weight, man, and earned his keep. <laughs> so, shout out to Minato. Any Minato fans out there, like, good, your boy actually did something. <laughs> oh, and also, guys, I forgot to mention this, uh, as well. Um, as you guys know, uh, I forgot to mention the intro video, but you guys remember that usually, you know, every season during episode 9, I would always do the episode discussion video, and then I mentioned it in, I believe, uh, the previous review, or the episode before that one, because I started having to do this whole share factor and connect my webcam, my PS5, and recording the audio, and then editing it and everything. Uh, that point before I had to change setups. Uh, that mentioned it probably wasn't going to happen, regardless of what happened in this episode. Yeah, even if I did that, my setup was like still, everything was fine. I was back and I was still being able to use Premiere on my laptop and everything. Man, I wouldn't have done a discussion for this episode. There wasn't really that much, there wasn't really that much for me to really do for this episode, man. But who knows? Maybe next week would have been that episode. So yeah, the streak was going to die this season, regardless. <laughs> the streak was going to die this season, regardless. But anyway, so Ojiro, like I mentioned before, we're back with, with the Ojiro team. They get word that Todoroki has also saved Dobby as well. And then, Totoro, and then Dobby, we also get a flag back to season one where Todoroki, where Todoroki said that the different job powers are different. And I got to say, man, I low-key miss uh, Todoroki's season one design. Well, I do say his current design is definitely better. I love the gauntlets he has on his arms now. But I do, too. His, his season one look looked amazing, man. With the eyes completely covering the the right side of his face and leaving this like red dot that's super menacing on his face, but the dots from his scar, it was really clean. Man. I low key kind of missed that design. I wish that was the design you got in Ultra Rumble and not the one where it just goes up to his shirt. 
I wish we'd have a full one that went all the way up to the space, but not. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll have put that one into the game uh, later on. But yeah, I like but I, I really like to throw the Rebels out. So we over get back to the coffin in the sky with Tony, with Tony, with, with uh, Rock, they're fighting off against Shin and Rocky. And then we head over back to it with, with Batgum, as well as Al Young. We hear from, we get, we hit, we see one of the other guys there who seemed to have been in with All for One that was supposed to do, was supposed to have a major role, but then the dictator failed meant he couldn't do anything. Or he seems like his quirk has to deal with flowers. Uh, but his design also is really cool, but I liked his design as well. And as the man goes off about, about planets and stuff, and like Batgum is asking if he's an alien and whatnot, man. Um, but I also really like this nice shot that we also got while he was going off about about all for one. Anyone that tricked him ends up dying. Where we see all for one, and the, and, it's, and we ever see a long shadow cast by him, a purple background, and then blood at the end of the man. I thought that was great. I, I like. That. I thought that was a nice little touch there. But, but yeah, we also get his name. Uh, it was a little hard to read with the subtitles. His name was Kunenda, if I pronounced that right. I don't know if I know. It's the subtitles are kind of in the way. So it's kind of a little bit hard to read, but I think it's okay. Anyway, we then head over back to Jaku Hospital, where Kudapiri is at, or some hospital, and we have Kota, it's actually, we have Kota at this side, this is the with, with, uh, with, Shou, with, with uh, Shoji, and then of course we see Kaiju Spinner, Godzilla Spinner, and I gotta say that I love his design, man, I love Spinner's Kaiju design, man, his voice also changed as well, it sounds a bit more monstrous as well, so I'm curious to see how this will sound uh, in the dub. And President Mike tells him that, that once again, that Todoroki has defeated Dobby, um, Spinner is shocked by this. He's like, no, this is an information war. This information will be wrong. There's no way he would be defeated. With his, with his person, there's no way he would be defeated. And then we also, while it's all going on, we get a flashback here, which I was going to say, this this flashback was also, was pretty well storyboarded, I gotta say. I like the way that this was uh, storyboarded. Where, where Totoro, where Dobby is offered by all for one to have a second court. He's like, nah, I don't need it. And so, Spinner is there as well, and he meant, and all for one tells him that you're the leader of the head for so you would have to, you have to have, so you need uh, the power to match that position, and gives him another quirk that turns him into a man, that turns him into Godzilla. And I like the way that this, and we have it, you know, it sounds like very much with like their sort of silhouettes, man, their shadows. Like I said, it looks really cool, man. I like the way overall this was story. And, and actually, Spinner talks about how Dobby has, of course, he doesn't need it. Dobby has everything, while he, and he, and he says, well, as, as all for one is covering his face, I don't have anything. But like I said, this part of the episode I thought was really well done. It was really well directed, storyboard. I like the way this was done. So Spinner said, so Spinner, so Spinner's called on the charge to, to, to capture Kudo Giri with his with his other Etromorts in tow as they march towards uh, as they march towards uh, Shoji and, and Kota. And you guys know now. I have now. You guys, some of you guys may have heard. You guys, especially Ramon, you guys know. And I mentioned some Murphy before that. We're going to be getting that there's probably going to be like a big fight between Ojiro, or not Ojiro, between Shoji and, you know, Spinner, and like, I know we'll cause some controversy apparently from the non-careers, man, like, I, like I've heard like little rumblings about them, and like, so I'm excited. We also see in the, in the, uh, the ED that we looks like we get some of, we finally get to see some of Shoji's backstory, which that I'm looking forward to. So, whenever we get this fun, which I, like I said, you guys thought I, you guys, I mentioned my review, I love that thought it's going to be the following episodes, uh, we're going to get that fight. But it looks like next week is going to be Endeavor once again, that we're going to be getting Endeavor's backstory, which that I'm really happy for. So maybe the following episode after that is when we'll get to Shoji. I don't know, might be later, but I'm excited for that fight whenever we get to Shoji and Spinner. As like I said, show, as like I said, Spinner just starts marching towards the man. Like, just imagine like staring that down. You got an army of like Hatchimors in front of you, and then you got fucking Godzilla leading them down with this big ass sword. Or like, like group of swords or blades, man. Awesome, Spinner's Godzilla inside of fine. I'm hyped for that whenever that fight gets there to see what damage uh, Kaiju Spinner will be doing as in later on in the episode. Anyway, we then head over back to Todoroki as he apologizes to to, to Ida about his engine stall. It looks like it's like it's like tears sort of like get turned to ice because of course how cold it is. It looked like I saw some outside effects. I don't know if it was from his tears or if it was just there, just like you know in the wind. But I can. So then we see that so then, then we see that somehow Dobby is still breathing, and we see a glowing purple circle in the middle of his chest. So it looks like he still got the cork anyway. Still got another. Extra or either that or he's, either that or he's gonna make Dobby self-destruct like Lady the God. I guess we'll I guess we'll I guess we'll see uh, I guess we'll see what what the in the future episode that's going. We then get to see the uh, the new the new renders for both Hawks and Endeavor, which will look fantastic, I must say. We then get we then hear back with Endeavor's team. We get a flashback to back to season six with with uh, with um 
Todoroki extended his hand out there to we will go uh, we'll stop toying together. But is anyone else in that that toy that shit that uh, fucking um Todoroki's finger, his thumb looks weird as hell in here, like it's bent at an unusual angle. But was it like this in the original episode? Or was this or was this reanimated and then just nobody noticed this? Like, is this an animation error? Is my are my eyes fucking with me? Like, did this look weird to anyone else? Am I going crazy? That was like the one thing I noticed, and you guys, and I went to my reaction, I was like, what the fuck is up with this stuff? Like, why is it, like, turned to the side like that? Is my, are my eyes just fucking with me, man? Like, I feel like I'm going crazy with this one. Anyway, all for one starts talking mad shit to, to, to all to endeavor about how, like, oh, you, about how you, how you didn't look at Toya. You pissed your, your own desires on the show, so you have ruined the lives of two of your sons. I love all for one man him just shit talking everybody man. It's fucking awesome. I love all for one man. He's such an amazing villain. So he's so he keeps going up saying this was that this was your choice, right? You're gonna you're gonna justify your message by sit again, aren't you? Sit by saying heroes have a lot to protect. And Hawks is real it's like, oh he's trying to provoke the man. He's trying to provoke he's trying to provoke uh, Endeavor here. And then he says that's why you will fail number one. I would see like a bunch of quarks pop out of his fingers, man. This shot also looks really cool. I'll try to see. I might put this shot on the thumbnail. Think about putting this shot on the thumbnail. Because it was a really nice shot. So Endeavor and Hawks charge us towards him. And, this, and then we finally get to get some backstory on like how exactly Hawks healed up. And we kind of see just how much damage Dobby did to him back in 6. Where Charger, well, Endeavor charges him from the front down for dot dot. Hawks go from the back to try to attack him from the back, but of course, all for one man to block with one of his various quirks. And mentions that, but even with recovery, with recovery girls too, you're not back to your old self. And also, he's barely, and he also mentions he's barely able to get his speed back, even after having to use fake feathers to reinforce the ones that he's left left. So, so yeah, his Dobby's damage did a lot of damage with him, where all his feathers didn't regenerate. He had to have some fake ones installed with the real ones he got to kind of get him back to where he was before, but it seems like it's still not completely... There he is, so yeah. <laughs> Dobby's flags, man, they are no joke. As the fight continues onward, Hawk, or Endeavor starts landing, starts going off, starts attacking him directly. The effects work here looks amazing as Endeavor fires off his flames, where now it's, he has like these like fists of flames, things. I forget what the move itself was called, but uh, it looked but it looked really fun. The vanishing fist is what it was called, man. It looks amazing. The ports are dimming, this is dimmed as shit, so you can't really get a good look for pretty here, but like from what we could see, man. It looked absolutely amazing, man. Like the effect for Hero goes as well, and, and Endeavor say you once again is just going off with these with these. Areas. I cannot wait to hear Patrick Sykes' version of this of this when the dub of this episode airs. I don't know if we'll do a double reaction to this episode or not, but if I do, it's definitely just going to definitely be uh, for Endeavor. If I do, so while all of this is going on, and all for one once again resumes him talk shit talking all for one uh, shit talking. Never saying that everyone's fine desperately to do their part. The youngsters and everyone else are focusing on the fight in front of them. So why are your so why is your heart somewhere else? Your masterpiece dealt with your failure for you, right? Reach your voice! <laughs> All for one man is the biggest troll in anime, bro. Like there is nobody that's as much of a troll and a professional hater quite like all for one man. He is a match. He is a match in this category, man. <laughs> <laughs> and all for one say you is just it's showing up the scenery, man. I cannot wait for the dub of this. I might I, I think I will do a double reaction for this episode, man, because by god, this is just too good. This is absolutely too good as it might he says rejoice in that. And of course if this just all this does is anger and death, which of course Hawk knows that this is all his plan to just anger him and he mentions about what's happening with the rapid and coach you with the come with the wanting to limit the um, collateral damage and everything, man, and all for one, and I like the way this was, this was, um, sound design, where, like, as this is going on, where uh, Hawks's, Hawks's audio is, like, slowly, it's, the volume of it is slowly reduced as it's going on to obviously make, to obviously get you an Endeavor's perspective that he can't hear Hawk, all he, all he sees him from is just beating the shit out of him, out of, or from Endeavor to beating the shit out of all for one, which I thought that was a really nice touch they did that with the sound design to kind of get you in his, uh, perspective of how or how it is for him. Uh, so I thought that was a really nice touch, man. And then this part of the episode was oh, perfect. Chef's kid. This was this was this was directed, edited, storyboarded, everything brilliantly. I love this part of the episode. So as so as so as Endeavor is just hailing down on total on on all for one, he says Toya's body. Couldn't find it, could you? And the look on Endeavor's face. And like right here, man, everything is completely silent. 
Besides, you know, obviously just all from one's voice, everything is completely silent. And oh, it was absolutely brilliant, man. This was absolutely genius. And like, and the, and the key animation on Endeavor's face once he realizes what happened and what happened to Joy's body was like I mentioned before. What were the bones that they did find there? I'm assuming that they did find there if if all for one took Toya's body. What were the bones? They leave like they leave like fake bones in like as to to like to to make him think to really make him think like he was dead, or were there just like some animals in there and they just happened to get burned to a crisp during the flames? I don't know. That's one thing I've always kind of been confused. That I've always been kind of confused about that the the enemy is just never quite answered. It's like what were the bones that they did find there? And like I said, the key animation here on the devil's face man is part. Whoever key animated this man, shout out to you, bro. You you did an incredible job. And then and then all for one says, of course you wouldn't. Of, of course you wouldn't have. Of course you wouldn't be able to. You were able to see the son you thought was dead. You should be grateful to me. <laughs> uh, and and Hawks and I think Hawks put this up, put said this said this eloquently, said this beautifully. He still had such a terrible car up sleep yeah. And like, oh for one man, this man just be pulling shit out of it and be like, like ha, ha my reversal car, your grandson to Shigaraki is actually your massive grandson. Ha ha ha! I took your son's body! <laughs> oh for one man, he do it too much, man. He do it too much. <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta learn. But anyway, Hawks continues on with saying that some of that is that's what that is. That has, uh, that has, that has lived their life and Atomic cannot dis cannot disconnect from the past like Hawks can. And I think that's his parents behind him in the shot we see. I think that's mostly both of his parents, but I can't, but they're both their back so it's kind of hard to see. But I'm like pretty sure that's his mom and his dad because you can see wings on the on the dude's uh, jacket. So I'm assuming that's also that's that is indeed uh, Hawks' parents. So he tries to back up. So he tries to so he tries to back up um, to Endeavor, but then but then but then all for one. Fires off some other quirk that takes a massive chunk out of Endeavor's side, and it looked pretty gruesome too, man. Like there was definitely a lot of blood there, man. Like, uh, so yeah, that was definitely a nasty. But it, so yeah, and as a, and as Endeavor is falling down to the ground, all for one fires off another attack at Dobby that told you that uh, that Hawks can't block, but uses his other fingers to try and like soften all, all Endeavor's fall to keep him in the fight. But right before the attack hits Hawks, Jiro on top of Tokoyami comes in there to save. The day. Of course, Hawks is like telling them to get away, go away, but like, you know, they're not leaving. So they're gonna try the next scene. It was pretty funny because, like, because uh, Jiro was telling Tobiyama to stop moving so damn much because she can't really, you know, she's not used to flying, so she's like kind of hard to like for her to like hang on there and then Toya, and then not Toya. Tobiyama telling her not to move as much because it makes him flustered. <laughs> I will say the shot of Jiro when she says, shouldn't you wait until after you beat us to say something? Because I all for one mentioned that, like in some comic you read, that there were some side characters that were meant to be foils to the main villain. And this will also get, get a better look at the cut of Endeavor. And like, you can straight up see like his flesh in there, man. Like, it's surprisingly gruesome, man. I don't know what's been, what happened between seasons, if it was, if it was simply just a director change that let them get to, that they've been able to get more graphic, there's been less censorship or not, but yeah, I've, been, I've been glad there's definitely been less censorship in the series. So after they're done arguing, eventually Hawks asks, asks Tokoyami to, to help him out, to help him out again, the hero. So from there, they start working together trying to, try to, you know, defeat All for One. All for One then releases, like, he's like, I don't even know how he needs to these like tendrils surrounded with like these heads with teeth on them man, trying to like chop at them but token but actually um Hawks uses his uses his wings to like to like get them out of the way. The anime looks pretty good before he charges them all for one, tries to land for a handful of slides. Once again it looks really good. The animation throughout this part of the episode look really, really good man. So eventually he lands right on top of them. But then afterwards a Jiro and and Tomiyama tells Jiro to aim for his helmet to see if he can crack it with the sound. He then unleashes and combines everything in together into this giant, massive cannon. Like, I don't know how else you would describe it, man, but this thing was fucking huge. Fire is out there. Hawks managed to do something there to push the, to move it out of their direct fire, but like as you guys know, they still got hit with it anyway, with Jiro possibly losing an ear. <laughs> like I said, that old shot looked nasty, man. And also, the shot where Jiro has, like, the ear with the blood coming out of the ear, man, looked at that. That was, that, was a, that, was a, that was a very good shot. The, image, the key animation on that looked really, really good. And that is the end of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. As I think I mentioned earlier, next week's going to be, and it looks seemingly going to be, a um, Endeavor focused episode giving us his backstory. So, Bachelor Guy Endeavor, which you guys know, I am super excited for that one, man. Patrick's going to go off for that, man. 
But yeah, that is week's episode ends. Fantastic episode as always, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Or, for the fuck's sake, for, for however, hey, my follow for this episode is going to be a 9 out of 10, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like it, you can subscribe if you're new. Follow me, so see if you feel like it. Links, subscribe below. As always, back for more. See you guys next time.